I received a number of vamps that um, have embroidered the number of unmarked graves that have been founded on um, numerous different sites. This one, she beaded with orange beads 104, and that represents the number of unmarked graves in Brandon. She beaded teardrops falling onto the ground. There is one piece that was created by the nine-year-old boy who is autistic. This is, I think, one of my favorite vamps because it's um, created by a child. My name is Deborah Young. I am a Cree woman and I'm a PhD student at Carleton University with the School of Social Work. One vamp coming from Calgary, Alberta. And after I heard the news back in May with the discovery or rediscovery of the unmarked graves at Kamloops Indian Residential School, I made a call for 215 baby vamps that I will donate to the School of Social Work to engage in a conversation around colonial violence in Canada. A vamp is the top of the magazine, and I put a call out for only a single vamp to represent the incomplete journey of, of the child. What I love about beads is that, you know, when they're just sort of scattered on the table, it's, it's sort of meaningless. It doesn't tell anything. But when you start threading them and beading them, you create images. And those images often tell stories. And that's, that's what I love about this particular project is the stories that each of the vamps tell. Hi, Deborah. Here's a vamp I made for my great uncle Sidney. Sidney was born in 1920. He lived in Aquasosne and was taken away to a school at a young age. My gran used to say, I don't know what they did to him at that school, but it wasn't Sidney anymore when he came home. Thank you for letting me tell his story and finding a way to mark his life as a child who mattered. I wanted to make this look like something his mom would have made him in the 1920s. This was, well, how it all began. This is my parents' residential school in Dauphin, Manitoba. And this is where they met. Um, my mom was 10 at the time and my dad would have been 12. He saw mom get off the school bus and he told his friend that that was the girl that he was going to marry. I am a first intergenerational residential school survivor. Both of my parents went to residential schools. My dad was five years old when he went to Prince Albert residential schools. My mom, uh, she was 10 and her first school that she went to was Brandon Industrial School in Manitoba. That was part of our family um, conversations that there were unmarked graves behind that school. So when I heard of this news, like everyone else, I was, I was shocked, but I wasn't really shocked because I knew those sites, those graves existed beyond the tree line in the back of the school. I think Canadians perhaps found it easy to dismiss that truth because they're old. But when you, it may be an old person telling their truth, but it was a young child that lived it. And I think people didn't understand that until those graves were identified. Wait, I love it. I love how you're just like, oh yeah. Okay. Look at this. That's sort of a oh, that's a nice dog. Well, that's like a, a, a nighttime sky yeah. blue. And then what I love about art is it creates 
a space in which people could come together and um, do something with their hands, work their, their brain, reflect upon the, whatever craft that they're, they're doing and, um, and have conversations. It brings community together in ways that I've, I've not experienced. It just makes me feel grateful. I know there's going to be, you know, some cynicism out there. You know, what is a vamp? How is that going to change? How is that going to change the situation? But I have to believe it, it will because it, something so simple and something so quiet speaks volumes.